I'm Steve for This Hook With Cars, and this is one of the two Stuart and Stevenson LMTVs that I bought a year ago. If you haven't seen the video yet, take a look at that. I had a lot of problems with this truck when I got it. I've been driving it around, and I think I've worked out a lot of the problems. So now it's time to start a build that I've been wanting to do for a long time. But before I can start building, I need to remove the bed from the truck. To remove the bed, there's a set of bolts that go all along the top of that top frame rail. And that bolts the bed onto the truck. The mud flaps are attached onto both the bed and the truck frame. And there's a couple little brackets here in the back that will have to be removed so that they're not smashed when the bed is removed. There's also a small amount of wiring in the front. That's for a switch for the passengers riding in the back to be able to alert the driver that you need to stop for some reason. Okay, now I have all of those bolts pulled out of the bed. Some of them needed to be heated up in order to get those nuts off. The two pieces of wiring I need to disconnect from the bed. I had added this solar panel. This is a 24 volt solar panel. And then this is the switch to alert the driver to stop. Luckily that just clamps on. So I can just unscrew these and move this off of the bed. Now I just have two screws right here to remove. Now everything's ready up here. Now for the small brackets. I have everything loose but this bracket but the weight of the bed is holding it and it's tilting, grabbing onto this bolt so I can't get it out either. I've turned the truck around so that I can get my forklift under it. So you can see the space where the forks would go under is not quite centered but I can open these doors on this side. They don't open on the other side. And then I'm hoping that I can get the forks in here in order to lift it so that it doesn't want to tip off to one side. The Toyota should be big enough to lift the bed, but I'll put the fork extensions on. And if it ends up being a lot heavier than I think, I do have forks for the D4. We'll use that to pull the bed off. It looks like it's lining up that I actually don't want to go through the door. I want the forks to be spread out as far as possible and it looks like I actually don't want to go through the door because then I'm going to hit this or that. So I will just go straight under it. If it starts to tip I'll have to figure something out. Let's take a look at it now. Unfortunately, the transmission sticks up past the frame here. I was hoping that I could take this piece of frame off, but as you can see, the transmission sticks up way too high for that. 
there really wouldn't have been a whole lot else that would have given me troubles but i am going to have to deal with making sure that i have clearance for that now i have the stewart stevenson pulled back inside now and i think you can see where things are going to be going i have a little r-pod camper this was the smallest one that i could find i'm going to be setting this right on the back of the truck I have another one sitting behind it. You can see the height difference there between where the trailer sits now and how much further up that's going to be. So basically, I'm gonna take the axle off, take the jacks off, and set that thing right up there on the back. So to make this fit, I'm gonna to have to get rid of the tongue of the trailer here. So I'll just cut it up here at these points but I do need to remove the electrical for the battery, the propane lines, and the electrics for both the electric jack and the trailer connections. All of those things are routed along the frame of the tongue over here, so I need to get all of this stuff off the tongue before I cut it off. Removing the battery is pretty straightforward. Just connect the lines. Looks like the battery wasn't even held in there. There was a strap that held the cover on, but that was just floating around in there. So I'll just remove the wires and pull the battery out. Apparently the strap is the only thing that held the box to that frame as well. That's, that's pretty cheap. Looks like the cover for the propane tank is only held on by this little wing nut here. There we go. Make sure that's off. I will probably want to reuse this bracket, but I can leave it here for now. I'll just unbolt the regulator and take all the hoses and set them back there. Just get them disconnected from the tongue for now. Now it's just a matter of removing all the clamps that hold these things to the frame. There is still a power wire running up to the power jack as well as the emergency brake switch but I won't need those wires later on. So I'm just going to cut them over here, leave the section on the tongue in case that ever needs to be used on some other project or another trailer. And since they don't apply to anything on the camper, it's okay to cut them here. Everything is disconnected now, but I think there's one more thing I want to do before I cut this off. I went and got these four by eight channels so that the forks can slide into them just like that. And then those will go underneath the camper so that I can lift it up. And currently my plan is to mount the camper to these and then mount these to the truck. But I won't really know how everything is looking until I get it up there. I have the tubes under there now. I have it setting on jacks. I got the tire off on this side. So now the tongue can be cut off. And I can see if I can lift this thing properly. Well, the tongue is cut off now. I'm still trying to sort out my balancing issues. It appears the axle will need to come off before I can set it up there. Luckily, it's only four bolts. Okay, it's coming down on the frame, getting really close. Mud flap over here wants to hit the septic valves. So this mud flap will have to come off completely. I just have the front jacks just barely touching the battery cover and the fuel tank to hold everything right now.
it's set on there now now I just need to strap it down and see if I can get this moved into the garage or if it's too tall now It did make it inside the door. Not sure how much there was to spare, but enough that I don't have to worry about it. The original ladder to get into the camper looks a little ridiculous now. So I think I'm just going to remove this completely. It was pretty cheap, just held on by a couple screws down there on the hinges. Figure out another way to get entry. That's better. I can just throw this ladder in there, pull it out when I want to get up there. It will work just fine until I have a permanent solution. And the grab handle should still work. To power everything in the camper, the wiring actually comes out right in the perfect spot. This is the battery box right here. Normally on a 24 volt vehicle like this, you would not want to connect to a 12 volt source. But on this particular truck, the alternator charges both at 12 volts and 24 volts. So that means that the 12 volt side won't get out of balance from the 24 volt side. So it's perfectly okay to draw your 12 volt source from the 12 volt side of this battery bank. The power wires are hooked up across this battery now. Let's turn on the kill switch, see if it works. It is not working, there's nothing on inside there. There was a second ground wire connected to the chassis, maybe the negative that I just connected was for something else. And this is the one that actually powers everything inside. So I need to bolt this back up. Okay, turn the power back off. Okay, have the ground wire connected there. Let's try it now. I can see the lights turned on inside. So that first ground must have been a dedicated ground that used to go to the trailer axle brakes. And it looks like they were grounding everything inside of the camper directly from the ground that went to the chassis. So now if I plug into shore power, it should charge the 12 volt side of my battery bank on the truck as well. I just realized I haven't given you a tour inside of the camper yet. I looked over the layouts of a lot of campers that are for sale. I've been watching Facebook Marketplace for a long time. And this one checks just about every box that I had. So over here, we have a pretty big kitchen. There's a microwave down there. That is actually a central vac. You can sweep up your little dust scraps over to here, pop that up. And it vacuums up all the dust off the floor. The television runs off of 12 volts, so no need to be plugged in or using an inverter. It's a little dinette area here. And then this allows the bed to get larger. So you can put this table down here and then flip the top mattress over here and have a queen size bed. Coming back the other way, we have a little couch and then the fridge, as well as a little furnace down here. The fridge is a two way. It will work off of propane or it will work off of the shore power. So a 120 volt AC source. On the opposite side, when we came in, there's a radio up there that controls speakers that are on the ceiling in here, as well as speakers that are outside. All of these come pre-wired for solar panels. So I just need to put my solar charge controller right here, add my panels up on the roof, but all the wiring is already run for me. Inside here is a nice sized bathroom. There is an actual toilet, which is something that is not really common in campers of this size and a separate shower. Usually you see a shower and a toilet combined together in a camper this size. 
for a camper this size, you couldn't really ask for anything more. One thing I did see in some campers this size is they did not have the rooftop AC. It would have been better to have one on the side in the wall, as some of them do. I think that's the only thing that I would change about this layout because I am concerned about height with this unit. If you look outside the window, we are just towering over all the other vehicles out there. I just put my ladder in there and then shut the door and then realized, how do I get the door open to get the ladder back out? Because I need the ladder to get to the door latch. Well, that's a problem that I'll work out later. Here it is parked next to my old one. You can see the new one is a lot taller. I do like how incognito the old one is. It doesn't, besides the solar panels on the top, you can't really tell that it's been modified, that it's a camper inside. But the M35 is a lot louder. The LMTV is a lot easier to drive, quieter. You can have a conversation inside. And I think the overall lengths are pretty similar. Here on the back, you can really see the difference, how much higher it is to enter to get into the LMTV-based motorhome rather than the M35 based. Well, that's going to be it for today. There's still a lot of work to do, a lot of engineering to get this permanently mounted onto the truck. The frame of the truck is going to twist. I don't want it to rip the motor home apart. So that's probably what we'll get into next time. And if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.